few years ago when I was about 20 years old. I used to work at a Subway restaurant part-time. I'm a female and I worked in my hometown about 10 minutes away from where I lived. The most frequent hours that I would work was evening closing shifts and I would maybe work three to four days a week. We closed at 9 p.m. and after about seven, it would usually just be really quiet and oftentimes just one of us would work the final hour or so. Plus we were a little bit understaffed. There was a night when I was working from three to eight and it was a pretty typical day of work. I made people sandwiches, took my break, then came back and swept the floors and then went back to helping customers. I would see a lot of people come in and out of the store every single day. Some people would come in a lot and I would sort of recognize faces, but for the most part, I didn't remember many of the people. But on this one night, I remember there was this guy who came in and sat down and was just sort of lingering around. And for whatever reason, he just came off as a little strange to me. Eventually, I saw him come up and he did order something. He stayed for quite a while to the point where it was almost time for me to leave and the place had quieted down so much that he was the only customer inside. I would guess he stayed there for about two hours straight. The guy just looked pretty average for the most part, medium height, brown hair and glasses. Finally, he got up and left. Over the next few weeks of work, I saw him a couple more times. He never stayed as long as the one time, but it did seem a little bit odd because he would just sort of stand around when we were busy during dinner. He would just sit at a table. I didn't notice him ordering anything any other times. Still, it was nothing that weird beyond my instincts of him seeming really creepy. But one night, when I was working a closing shift, I'd been working with my coworker Jen, and when we closed, Jen went home and I stayed back to do some cleaning. After I locked the place up, I walked out to my car in the parking lot. My car was the only one there, and after I got inside, I took out my phone to text my mom that I was on the way home. As I was looking at my phone screen, I saw something out of the corner of my eye. I looked up to see that somebody was walking in the parking lot. I noticed the guy that I had seen around the subway before. He was on the other side of the parking lot, but he was walking towards my car. As I saw him get closer and closer to me, I quickly put my car into reverse, backed out, and then left the parking lot, driving away. The guy definitely seemed like he was trying to get to my vehicle, but for what reason, I don't know. He really gave me the creeps, but thankfully the next day at work, I didn't see him. Several nights after that, I was closing again, and after a long day at work, it was finally time to close up. I was alone this time again to close, and after locking the restaurant and cleaning it, it was time for me to go. As I got towards the door, right as I was about to open it, I suddenly saw the guy again. I just saw his head, and he appeared to be hiding right around the corner from the door out of my view, but I saw him when he seemingly leaned over to look inside. I jumped back and then took several steps away from the door. The guy suddenly ran to the door and tried opening it. Thankfully, I hadn't opened it and it was locked. The guy then went to the side and out of my view. I could see a majority of the parking lot with the big windows that Subway has, but there was a large area to the right that I couldn't see where the man could easily be hiding and waiting for me. I called my mom on the phone and told her what was going on. She told me she was on her way and if I saw the man again to call the police immediately. Because we lived close by, my mom arrived within 10 minutes, and I didn't see the man during this time. When she got there, she called me on the phone. She told me that when she pulled into the parking lot, she saw a man standing at the side, and when her headlights shined over him, he ran away into the nearby woods beyond the parking lot. I left the store and sprinted to my car, then I drove back home behind my mom. After that, I decided to quit working at Subway. I'm not sure who that guy was, but I haven't seen him since. This story takes place about four years ago when I was traveling. I was making a little road trip of about seven hours to visit a friend. I could make the drive in a day by leaving early in the morning, which I did. After driving for hours, I got hungry and at about 11 a.m. I decided to look for a place to eat on the next exit. About 10 minutes later down the road, I came across a sign for a subway and took the exit which led me to a seemingly small town. I was sort of out in the middle of nowhere at this point and didn't really know where I was. I drove about a mile down the road to where the subway was. I liked subway because I knew they were everywhere and you always knew what to expect. However, some subway restaurants are very different than others and this one seemed a little bit sketchy. It was a different type of building than most subways that I had seen in the past. 
Plus, the parking lot was weirdly in the back, in a sort of gravel parking lot. I started getting second thoughts as well because of how run down the town was seeming. The other businesses nearby had bars over the windows, and several were abandoned completely. I almost turned around right there, but I was so hungry, and it was in the middle of the day, so I figured I would be fine. Plus, it seemed really quiet, and nobody else seemed to be around. I parked in the parking lot, which only had two other cars in it, and then went around to the front of the subway and went inside. I got inside to see there were no other customers, which made ordering pretty easy. I got a sub and left within probably five minutes or so. After I left the restaurant, I went back to the parking lot to my car. But when I got there, I saw that my driver's window had been smashed. There was glass all over the ground next to it, and the inside of my car was completely exposed. I didn't see anybody nearby, so I figured they got away. I walked up to my car then and looked inside. It was an SUV, and I never really kept anything that valuable inside. I saw nothing seemed to be out of order, so I took a couple steps back and then took some pictures of the damage. I then decided I would drive to the police station. I searched the closest one on Google and then got directions. I got in the car and began driving over. But only a few minutes down the road, and all of a sudden I felt myself being grabbed from behind. I looked up, and there was a hand around my upper right arm. I was being pulled backwards, and when this happened, my car started to swerve around a little bit. I slammed on my brakes and looked behind me. There was a man that was behind my seat on the ground. I couldn't see him, but he had a hold of me. After my car stopped, I hit him with my free hand over and over. It was all happening really fast, and the next thing I knew, my back door swung open and the man ran off. He left the door open and I sped away without even closing it. I watched the man run off the road and behind a building that was on the side of the street. I continued driving to the police station and when I got there, I told the local officers about the whole thing. I had to stay there for a while and it delayed me a little bit, but for the most part I was fine and insurance was able to cover my broken window. at a subway currently. This is something that happened just several weeks ago. It was a typical night. I was working behind the counter making sandwiches for customers who stopped in. I would guess the time was about 8 p.m. or around there. Things were going smoothly and there was a number of people eating inside the restaurant. There was one guy that walked in and went straight for the counter though. He was going towards the end of the counter where you pay, so I walked to that end. When I got there, the man asked if he could please get something for free. I was not allowed to give anything free and had been specifically told that by my boss in the past, so I told the man no. He asked again, but I shook my head at him. The man then walked over and sat down at a table in the corner of the restaurant. Somebody else came in after that and I went to go make them a sandwich. When I was done, I saw that the man was still sitting at the table in the corner by himself, but he was just staring at me. It was weird to say the least, so I looked away fast. I remained around the counter, helping customers every so often when they came inside. And every time I looked at the guy in the corner, he kept looking at me. I told my coworker Mike about it, and he noticed the man as well. We both thought it was really strange. The man would just stare up at us the whole time. Eventually, it came almost time for us to close. The guy was still there, and everybody else had left, so I was really hoping he would leave soon, because I didn't want to try to kick him out. I went into the back to talk to Mike. When I returned, thankfully, the guy had finally left. We closed in five minutes, but I decided to go lock up early. After that, I locked the door and said goodbye to Mike, but before leaving, I went to use the restroom. When I got to the door, I noticed it was locked. This worried me because I had already locked up the restaurant and I hadn't noticed anybody go inside. I knocked on the door, saying to whoever was in there that we were now closed, but nobody answered me, and after knocking again, I figured somebody must have locked the door from the inside and then left. This had happened once before. When that happened, I had to go get the key that we had in the back to unlock it. I walked to go get the key that we had. When I was in the back of the subway, I suddenly heard the bathroom door open. I realized that somebody must have been in there after all. I expected them to leave, but I never heard the outside door opening. I started to walk out from the back to behind the counter, but as I did, I heard a loud noise of a chair falling over and hitting the ground. I stopped right at the entrance of the space where I could see enough of the restaurant without myself being seen. I witnessed the same man that I had seen in the restaurant earlier 
standing right in the center. He then pushed over another chair. For some reason, he seemed angry. Maybe the guy was insane or something. I wasn't sure. As quietly as I could, I moved to the back, as far out of sight as I could get from the man. Then I found a closet that I could hide in. It was a little storage closet, and as I got in there, I started to hear more and more noises from the restaurant, and the man was seemingly now flipping tables and chairs. I got out my phone and called the police. I was really hoping this guy wouldn't come into the back, but I felt like it was inevitable. I explained to the police what was going on as I heard more loud noises from the restaurant. Eventually, I heard him get to the counter and possibly the cash register. I was told the police would be there shortly and hoped they would arrive before the man reached me. I sat inside the small storage closet, hearing more and more things getting smashed, and then heard the man walking closer towards me. I don't believe he knew I was in there at all, and I held my breath so he wouldn't hear me. Finally, I heard a siren off in the distance, and it got louder and louder. Shortly after that, I heard shouting. I couldn't exactly tell what was going on, but within five minutes, I heard an officer call out to me, and I was able to exit and go into the restaurant. When I did, I was told the man had been caught and saw that our entire restaurant had been really messed up. We were closed for several days when we got things fixed, but we opened back up shortly after that, and I've still been working there.